Okay, so let's look at electrolytic. I told you there were two type, uh, two types of electrochemical cells. They're galvanic or voltaic is one name, and those are cells that are favored. There's also electrolytic cells. Electrolytic cells are unfavored reactions. So now we're going to have um, we're going to have a negative potential instead of a positive potential. And so to make that reaction occur, we're going to connect a battery. And the battery is going to drive the reactions in the direction that they were not favored to go. Okay, so an electrolytic cell, you don't need to separate the solutions. You can just have one solution, one container, and you're going to drive the electrons from one electrode to another. Quite often this is used for plating something. So I could take a metal that was not a pretty metal and put it in silver solution, silver ions floating around. I could take a battery, this is a battery, and it's going to drive the electrons this way, right? Keep asking if you agree and you are a camera. Okay, so the electrons are going to be driven to this metal, meaning there's these negative charges that are, that are here. Those negative charges would attract positive ions in the solution, which would reduce, making this electrode larger. And then to complete the circuit, right, because I have positive things leaving here, I'm going to need some positive going in. So now all of a sudden electrons are leaving this metal, being taken up and pumped on over. Um, I'm going to have electrons leaving this, so it's going to be turning this guy into positive ions. Unless there's something easier to oxidize or reduce, which be, would be the water almost always. So let's label the parts real quick. The cell is very similar, but it usually happens in one cell, right, instead of the two that we used for galvanic. Make sure you have a battery <laughs> to force the electrons to go, right, because it's an unfavored reaction. So reduction always happens at the, cat the cathode, so it's still red cats, red cats. Reduction happens at the cathode, but this time you're forcing electrons to go in a direction that they're not favored to go to. So the reason you needed a battery is that you're forcing negative electrons to go to a negative electrode. Remember in galvanic, it was red cats are positive. Reduction happens at the cathode, which is positive. So in a favored cell, reduction happens at the electrode that is positive. That makes sense. Negative electrons go to the, to the positive um, electrode. They're attracted. So that's what happens naturally. Galvanic cells is the spontaneous cell. It's the cell that occurs. When you have an electrolytic, the battery forces the negative electrons to the negative electrode. Okay, reduction happens at the cathode, which is negative. So oxidation is going to happen at the anode. I don't know why I made that a Q. Oxidation happens at the anode. Oxidation at the anode. And this is going to be positive. So we're driving electrons away from where they're favored. This is kind of an kind of a strange thing, the whole assigning it positive and negative. Okay, so um, let me give you an example. The, the thing you're going to want to do when you have an electrolytic cell, you control where the electrons are going. After that, the electrons are going to go and reduce the thing that is easiest to, do, to reduce, and the electrons are going to leave the easiest thing it is to oxidize. So you're going to want to make a list and make sure if you have a solution that you include water in that solution. So how about, I'm going to make mine, um, let's electrolyze some sodium fluoride. So here's my, my stuff. Uh, I'm gonna use some, how about some graphite? So just carbon electrodes, they're really not reactive. So I'm not gonna include them in my list of possible, could be oxidized, could be reduced. Here's my battery. It's really weird, but it, that's like, the battery. Okay, so electrons are going to go this way. Um, I'm going to have sodium ions floating around here. I'm going to have fluoride ions floating around, and I have water. Let's not forget the water. I like to make a list of things that could be oxidized, and well, actually, let's do reduced first because I've got a list of um, standard reduction potentials, so it's just easier. So things that could be reduced. Water. I'm going to say that this is a one molar solution of sodium fluoride, so let's start with water. If I reduce water, you know, 
you could balance the equation and figure out adding electrons to water, the electrons would go to the positive hydrogen, make the hydrogen neutral, so you're making hydrogen gas. And when you take hydrogen off of here, you make hydroxide. You could do that. Or you could say water, water, water. Mm. It's on here. There it is. Two waters plus two electrons make H2 and two hydroxides. And that is unfavored by a negative 0.83 volts. Okay, so that's what my battery would have to be to drive that versus a hydrogen cell. Okay, so then the other thing that could be reduced, well, I'm adding electrons to it. I could go through this whole list if I was really confused over what could be reduced and see what else. And fluoride is not a reactant on my standard reduction potentials. It cannot be reduced. Also, it's already negative. I, I don't, I've never heard of F2 minus. It's a whole new shell you're adding an electron to. That doesn't happen. Sodium, atom, that could occur. I know it's an unstable metal though, so let's see how difficult that would be. Okay, so sodium being reduced to mix sodium metal. Negative 2.71. Okay, so in the battle of things that are not easy to do, we are going to reduce our water. All right, then we look at things that could be oxidized. <laughs> I think I've chosen something that's kind of boring. I did, I totally did, but it's fine. Um, things that could be oxidized. So we could oxidize water. Um, water, if it's gonna lose electrons, you could think about it. You could be like, oh, it's gonna come out of the oxygen. Yeah, and if I take oxygen and I take electrons away from it, I make O2, and I leave the H plus of the water behind, so I leave H plus. You could do that, or you could look for when something's been reduced to something, and that something is water, what would it be going backwards? So I'd look for water as a product. Two waters go to O2 plus four H pluses plus four electrons. All right, by the way, this sheet is um, just straight off of the internet. It's one of um, those four pages you get with any AP test. Make sure you're really comfortable using this. So, all right. This says 1.23 when it's written in this direction. So it's gonna be negative 1.23 volts. Negative 1.23 volts. Okay. Fluoride. All right. When fluoride is reduced, it turns into F2, two electrons, and that takes two fluoride ions, and that is, when it goes this way, favored by 2.87, so it's gonna be a negative 2.87. Whoops, 2.87. All right, so here, they're both unfavored, but this is gonna be the easier thing to do. Okay, so a very exciting electrochemical cell. We've just done some hydrolysis. So we're moving the electrons to the solution. The electrons are more attracted to the H plus than they are to the sodium plus, so you're gonna be making little hydrogen bubbles. I made bubbles, little bubbles right there. Okay, so we're making hydrogen bubbles over here as we reduce the hydrogen, H2. And then on this other side, you're removing electrons. You're removing electrons from the oxygen, which is like kind of a two minus in the water. So making more bubbles, more bubbles, and you're making O2 bubbles. Okay, one thing you can think about is that you need four electrons to make a mole of O2. You only need two electrons to make a mole of H2. So, every time you make a mole of oxygen, those four electrons that are being taken off go to the, the hydrogen and make two moles of water. I'm gonna make twice as many bubbles of H2. Now that's very accurate. All right, so electrolytic cells. Unfavored, you need a battery to drive the reaction. The only thing that really changes is now a reduction is happening at the cathode, which is negative. So you change the sign of the cathode. Um, look at possible things that could be reduced, possible things that could be oxidized. Your possible things are gonna be water, if you have a solution, whatever cations or anions you have floating around, and often the electrodes. I chose graphite so it was a little bit easier, but I could have had metals that could have possibly been oxidized. 